Your packaging includes the following items. Of course, this is your video game system itself. They are, um, it is powered by a USB power. HDMI goes here. And then you plug in your two controllers in the front. And then also on the side, there's this little compartment that's kind of covered. And you have two more um, there on that side. So you have up to four players in total. But probably just going to use the two in the front. This would be your first person controller and your second person controller. I also include your controller itself. The ones I use look like a Super Nintendo controller. They have a good feel to them and they're a good quality controller. I have extras in stock for 10 bucks a piece if you need any extras. Uh, these controllers, um, like I said, just USB. They plug right into the front of the game system. When you do that, you want to make sure that you're um, plugging it in. It only goes in one way. Um, so you'll see that it's pretty tight. It fits pretty tight. But if you look at the USB connection itself, um, one side of it, um, it doesn't have anything. Is, is there like the, the two little holes are like um, blank or empty? And on the other side, there's two little white pieces. You can see the white coming through that. Uh, that needs to be up. If that side is up, that'll fit right in there. And just slides right in. That's kind of tight, so just kind of be careful. Don't jam it in too much. Should fit in just perfectly, just like that. Also include your your power cord. Um, obviously, this end plugs into the wall, and then this end is going to plug into the back of your device. This is a uh, micro USB, so one end is kind of rounded, like the top portion is kind of rounded, and the bottom is flat. So you need to look on the back of your game system and see how the flat edge is to the bottom. So you want to make sure that your flat edge on this is to the bottom. And then it'll just fit right in nice and perfect just like that. Then you have your HDMI cable. I generally include those with the device. This is really simple. I don't need to explain to you how to hook up an HDMI. Obviously it would go into the slot right here. And the other end would go into your TV. Just make sure that the, on your TV settings that you have it plugged into the proper HDMI slot and that your TV is on the proper input setting for the proper HDMI um, so that you'll pick up the device as soon as it's loaded up. I also include an instruction manual. Um, I want you to read through the instruction manual. It's going to tell you a little bit about the system and everything you need to know. All my contact information is on the back, so if you ever need to get a hold of me, you can give me a call, email me, get me on Facebook or whatever. So that's pretty much it. That's what your game system looks like. That's what you get in the, in the package. That's everything you need, and you should be ready to go. Next, we'll talk about booting up the device. Booting up the system is really simple. It takes just a few minutes. When you get everything plugged up, you're going to see all this uh, lettering and stuff on the left-hand side then my company logo and a little bit more lettering it takes just a minute this is just a boot sequence like a computer would do uh, it just takes about 30 seconds and your device will be all booted up to configure your input your input being your controller when you have a new controller, you'll have to configure this input. When you have a new controller inserted into the game system, it'll automatically come up as you need to configure input. But if not, and you want to reconfigure your controller at any time, just pull up your main menu. You do that just by pressing your start button. Your start button is your main menu. Press start to pull it up and start to put it away. Your select button pulls up your options menu select to pull it up and select to put it away so we're going to change our controller input settings we're going to reconfigure our input just press your start button that pulls up your main menu and you're going to go down to configure input press your a button one time are you sure you want to configure input yes by pressing your a button and it'll say one game pad detected you're going to press any button on the device and hold it in for a couple seconds and then let it go now when you're on the configuration screen, what you're going to want to do is configure these buttons. So on the D-pad, you're going to press up, down, left, right. You're going to press your start button, your select button, your A, B, X, and Y. 
your left shoulder, your right shoulder. Now the rest of these buttons on this specific controller we do not have. If you had a PS3 controller, a 360 controller, or something like that, it would have these trigger buttons in the left thumb and the right thumb. But since we don't have these on this, we're going to skip by these. How we're going to do that is we're just going to hold down any button for about two seconds and then let it go. See how it skipped to the next selection? So now we're going to do the same thing again. Hold that button in for a couple seconds, let it go. Hold the button in for a couple seconds, let it go. And we're going to continue to do this all the way down to the very bottom because you don't have any of these selections on this Super Nintendo-like controller. Now when you get down to the hotkey, um, we're not going to enable a hotkey, so we're going to skip by it also, just the same way. And then we're going to hit OK, and it's going to say that you didn't en enable a hotkey. I understand that. We want to do this because that's going to allow us to press Start and Select together to back out of any game. Press your A button, hold it in for about two seconds, and then let it go and give it a second for it to work. Now you're back to the main menu. Just press your B button to get out of that or press your start button to put that away. Either way. Now your configure, um, your uh, controller is, is configured to this device. The only other thing we really need to talk about when it comes to controllers is to just understand that the ones that I include I know these are good controllers. I've bought controllers from many different suppliers in the past, and I've been through some that were really decent and some that were not good at all. So if you want to go out and get a cheaper, um, you know, controller than what I provide, you know, that's fine. This system will work with any wired USB controller. So as long as it's wired, hardwired to the controller itself, a hardwired PS3 controller, a hardwired 360 controller, and in theory anything for a Wii U or a PS4, uh, possibly even PS5. If it's a hardwired controller, it should work just fine with this system. Uh, I know that most all hardwired PS3 and 360s um, controllers work with it really well. Uh, the only ones I would be aware of is any of the at-home brand controllers from uh, GameStop. Uh, every one that I have tried does not function with the Raspberry Pi, so I would stay away from any of the at-home brand controllers. Otherwise, any wired USB controller will work just fine for you. Uh, these are good controllers. They have a good reaction time. They're good. They're responsive. Uh, they work really well, and they seem to last a long time. I've had people that have had my systems with one of these controllers specifically for um, a couple years, and they're still using the same controller, and it still works and plays all their games. So um, if I was you, I would stick with the ones I have. Um, I have extras for 10 bucks a piece. The system is up to four player, uh, and you can buy as many as you'd like to from me. For 10 bucks a piece but you certainly don't have to uh, one controller comes with the device and if you're playing uh, by yourself that's all you'll need navigation of the system is really simple once the uh, system is all the way booted up just press your right or your left uh, on the d-pad to go right across the screen or left across the screen and you just choose whichever platform you want. If you find something, like let's say you want to play some Nintendo games, to select Nintendo or whatever, just press your A button one time. Now you can scroll down to the list, and this is in alphabetical order. It's A to Z. Um, you can use your D-pad to go up or down through the list, or you can use your right bumper to go down the list faster left bumper to go up the list faster. Now if you hold down on your d-pad for a little while it'll eventually speed up and it'll get a lot faster like that. Or you can do the same thing by holding in your right bumper or your left bumper and it'll go a lot faster. If you find a game that you want to play um, just press your A button one time and it'll take about 10 seconds or so for this game to load up. If you press your A button too many times, you'll come up to this screen right here. Uh, you don't want to do that. If you do come up to this screen, just go down to the bottom where it says exit. Press your A button to exit. Your A button is your action button. 
your B button goes back, so B goes back, A advances forward. Like I say, you want to play the game, pressure A button one time and let it load up. Don't pressure A button any more than one time and the game will load up for you. It takes about 10 seconds or so to load the game. To back out of any game, anytime you're playing a game and you want to play something else, while you're in gameplay, just press start and select together. The start button and the select button together at the same time, and that'll back you out of any game when you're playing. So we're going to talk a little bit now about your save features. Um, on this system, you have the ability to save any game at any point within the game. That's kind of a cool feature because it allows you to be able to walk yourself through games that you've never been able to beat before. And we call these save states. So I'm going to show you how to enact your save states and how to create your save states. So what you're going to do is you're going to get yourself to a point within the game that you have a hard time with. So let's say, for instance, this flagpole. We just have one heck of a time getting to the top of the flagpole. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a save state right here, which is right before the point that you want to try to accomplish. And you're going to create a save state by pressing your right bumper and your select button together at the same time. Right bumper plus select. If you see down on the bottom left hand of the screen, it says save state created. Now you have a save state at that exact point in time. So if we jump and we miss it and we want to go back and try it again, we're going to have to enact that save state. The way we're going to do that is we're going to press our left bumper and select together at the same time. Left bumper plus select. And that puts us right back at that exact point in time. And we try it again and we make it. And now we can go on and we can actually create another save state at a later point, then we don't have to go back past that point in time. You see now we've gone past that, so we want to create a new save state over top of the old save state, so now I'll create a new one, right bumper plus select, create the save state, then if you get to a point where you, you die, then you can go back to that point in time by pressing your left bumper and select. So right bumper select creates the save state, left bumper select enacts the save state. You see how I did that? We're going to create the save state and then we can go back to that save state. Now you can jump yourself through these levels, walk yourself through levels that you've never been able to beat before. And you get a little further oh, and you die so you can go back to that exact point in time. And when you get past that point, or not, you can just create yourself another save state over top of that save state. It's going to take a little while to get used to, um, and you're going to have to work with it for a little while to where you can get used to creating and enacting your save states, but once you get really fluent with it, it's really smooth, it's really second nature, there's nothing to it. Now there is another way to do this, uh, it's not easier, it's a little bit more difficult, but if you press your X button and select together at the same time, you'll pull up your quick menu. In your quick menu, you can go down and you can say save, save state. Just press your A button, creates a save state. X button and select pulls up the quick menu. X button and select puts away the quick menu. Go down the save state, load the save state, use the save state, whatever you wanna do. So that will work too, but it's not as fluent, it's not as easy to work with. And my recommendation is to just very quickly create another safe state over that old spot. And then if you die, you go back to that point in time and not have to go all the way back to the last point in time that you saved at. So this will allow you to get further in games that you've never been able to beat before. Create yourself another safe state. 
So you're playing really hard games, this is going to make it really easy for you. You die, go back to that point in time. Just like that. So, it's really cool, it's really unique, and this will really help you out. In the RetroPie configuration menu is where all your settings are. So I would rather that you don't mess with that and try to let your kids know that you don't need to mess with that. I have this configured pretty well already to where everything is optimized to run correctly. And if you get in here and you do some kind of crazy stuff, you might mess it up. Now don't worry, you do have the, the guarantee. So if your kids mess it up for me, or for you, just bring it back to me and I'll fix it for you. It's not a problem, but you don't want to have to be going back and forth all the time because the configurations got messed up. So just try to stay out of the RetroPie menu. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is that you do have um, a selection here for your audio. If you ever find that your um, control that your uh, game system doesn't have any audio, you might have to go into that and go down to the third selection, which is HDMI, and make sure that your output is set to HDMI. Uh, it's really simple. There's nothing to it, but um, you most of the time you should never have to do this. But there are some um, knockoff, like uh, kind of like um, oddball TV sets out there that you'll have to set that up. For, the, for your TV. You'll just have to go into that audio and set that up, otherwise you won't hear any volume. But that's very few uh, TV sets that I've had that problem with, but um, I have had it happen before, so I just want to mention that, and just in case you happen to have that one TV set that doesn't recognize your HDMI audio output right away, um, and you'll have to go in and change that over to HDMI on your RetroPie settings. Um, other than that, nothing else you should have to worry about in here. Everything else is already set. Um, you can go down and set up your Wi-Fi if you really want to, but um, I don't recommend doing any kind of thing like this with your Wi-Fi and your Bluetooth and stuff unless you really kind of know what you're doing. Um, but if you do, you know, go, go ahead, check it out. Um, if you mess it up, just bring it back and I'll fix it for you. So let's talk a little bit about the light gun games. Some of the games are on here and some of them aren't. I've taken the liberty to remove the ones that are um, shooter games that require the, the zapper guns. Um, the reason is they are not going to work. Um, the biggest reason is when the light gun games were made, they were made with an old school TV um, to the point to where you shot the gun and it bounced the signal off of the TV. Now when you have a newer TV like this, um, the signal from the gun would not bounce off the screen, being though it's a flat screen. There is no glass on the front of the screen, so there's no way for the signal to bounce back for the gun. So that's why your light gun games are either not included or will not function for you. Um, if you want, you can go out and try to get a light gun that will work on a flat screen TV, but I have to tell you they're very expensive and I'm not sure that they're going to be compatible with the Raspberry Pi. So one of the things that I want to mention is that on the arcade there's a couple things that are a little bit different. For one, when you get to a game that you want to play, you're going to have to press your select button before you press your start button to play the game. And that's because your select button is your coin op, it's your coin insert. These are just like the original arcade game, so it's looking for a coin insert. And your coin insert button for this configuration is your select button. So you're gonna press your select button, that's gonna give you your, um, your credits to play the game, and then you can just press start and play the game like normal. Now one thing else that I do wanna mention um, on, on these games is that most of the arcade games are going to run just fine but you will find that you'll have some issues with arcade. Uh, there are going to be several that are just not going to run. Either because of the fact that they just don't run well with the Raspberry Pi setup or the fact that they need a special controller like a rollerball or a gun or something like that. So this just not uh, compatible. Um, some games require two analog joysticks to be able to control 
and uh, you don't have that with this setup with this configuration on this controller. Um, you might be able to combat that by buying some uh, other controllers that do have the extra analog sticks and things like that. It might help you, but you will still run into a few games just for the arcade, um, but that, that just won't run. Um, now you can change the emulation for that exact game set, for that exact set of ROM, but it, it may work for you and it may not, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that now. So you just select your game like normal, and then I want you to press your A button a couple times until this screen appears. And when it does, you just go down to select emulator for ROM and choose a different emulator. And then once you do that, go down to exit, and then try the game again and see if it works. I want to talk now a little bit about Intellivision games. So these are a little bit difficult. Um, ColecoVision is going to be kind of the same way. Uh, if you remember the Intellivision or the ColecoVision, you'll remember that you had a numbers pad um, on your controller. And that's how you selected um, which, which um, you know, whether you wanted one or two players or how to start the game and stuff like that. So specifically on Burger Time and, and possibly lots of other games for the Intellivision or ColecoVision, you're going to have to pull up this little um, little pad controller. And how you do that is by pressing your left bumper. If you press your left bumper, you'll see that on the left-hand bottom section of the screen, you have a number pad. And you can just go to E. That's E, I would imagine, for enter. And then press your um, A button. It's going to ask you how many players. You can go up. You can select one or two players. Obviously, I'm going to select one player. And then go down to E. And that's going to start the game. So that's how you do that on Intellivision uh, and ColecoVision. That'll make it a lot easier for you. So, because um, otherwise you won't be able to play games. If you just try to press start or a button or whatever, you're going to realize that uh, it doesn't work. But that's how you do it. That's how you get your number pad pulled up. And that'll help you with your Intellivision or ColecoVision games. When you're done playing this system and you're ready to shut it down, it has a safe shutdown feature built into the uh, console itself. So you can just flip it off, but I recommend pressing your start button to pull up your main menu, going down to quit, selecting quit, and shut down system and really shut down. Give it about 5 or 10 seconds and then unplug your device.